Okay, hello, good afternoon, let's start. So um, today we're carrying on with uh, Gretschka on misrepresentation. And we'll wrap up on misrepresentation on Friday. Um, okay, so um, I want to begin by just going over where we ended last time on magnetosomes, and then into um, what's kind of a basic problem for Gretschka's approach, uh, indeterminacy, the indeterminacy of function, and Gretschka's solution to that approach, which has to do with multiple roots and associative lambing. Um, and then finally, I'll raise another problem for Gretschka's approach. But just to say first what the approach was, um, he has this example. Marine bacteria have internal magnets, magnetosomes. Um, why does them good to have a magnetosome? Seems to be it allows the bacteria to move into deeper water. Uh, moves, they move towards magnetic north. Moving towards magnetic north generally takes you into deeper water. And they need water that's oxygen free. That's kind of a datum. They obviously do need water that's oxygen free. So here um, you can see um, two marine biologists looking for magnetosomes um, in Norway. Um, I hope that helps. Um, there you go. That's <laughs> I, I, I take it that this um, here is full of marine bacteria. Um, and this is what they're catching, uh, something like this with the magnetosome being that strip there. Now, this is clearly a very primitive animal. Um, you and I might look, like, look at such an animal and in our superior way say, huh, <laughs> that's pretty primitive, not as sophisticated as me. Um, and you might say, how can my thought and language be possibly modeled by such a simple creature? Um, and that's right, that is the basic question from Gretzky's approach. The thing is, what is engaging about this example is that there does seem to be some sense in which you want to say the magnetosome is for something, it has some point. Um, so that you can't you get some notion of right and wrong going for the magnetosome. And then if you think about human beings, I guess the Gretzky program is, if you think about human beings, well, um, the human brain is very complicated. Uh, but when you break it down, there are things in vision that alert you to when something is moving fast. There are systems in vision that alert you to when something red is present. Um, there are all these little things, like as it were, small magnetosomes in your visual system, in your perceptual systems generally. There are just ways of picking up on different features of the world around you. And in fact, maybe it's like that for the whole brain. Maybe what you have is something that's just a lot more of the same. It's not fundamentally different in kind. Um, it's evolved mechanisms for detecting one or another aspect of your surroundings. And maybe that's all language is. It's a device for picking up on those uh, millions of systems you have for detecting one or another aspect of your surroundings and then telling other people about those aspects that you've detected. So although this is very simple, the idea is maybe it gives us a model for human thought and language. Maybe it gives us a kind of building block that if we just stack enough of those together, we will get human thought and language out at the other end. Um, and straight off, there are two questions I think you might have about this. One is that there's a kind of flexibility and learning that human thought seems to be capable of that this animal isn't going to be capable of. I mean, this is just so simple. That, and isn't that flexibility and learning in our thinking isn't that essential to the way it works? And another yeah. question is, could we really understand the concept of truth and falsity that we have for ordinary language on the basis of this kind of simple model? Um, it's a very engaging question because many people would say we must be able to do that. Humans are biologically evolved creatures. Thinking and language are biologically evolved systems. They must consist in stuff like this all stacked together. So the model is, uh, this is Gretzky's definition of functional meaning again. Do you remember Gretzky's definition of functional meaning? You remember Gretzky's? We all remember Gretzky's. Okay, um, the, um, the magnetosomes pointing north functionally means that um, uh, the, um, uh, the... Sorry, let me re retake that. The magnetosomes pointing straight ahead means that geomagnetic north is straight ahead. That means something like um, the function of the magnetosome pointing straight ahead is to indicate where magnetic north is. Right? Is that all right? That's just reading out the definition of functional meaning. What you would say it takes for the magnetosome to have that functional meaning. And the magnetosome does that in part by indicating that uh, geomagnetic north is straight ahead by pointing straight ahead. And when you look at the needs of the bacteria, you can see that the magnetosome has the function of indicating the direction of oxygen-free water. So given those things about function and indication, you can get what, what it means when you say uh, the magnetosome's pointing straight ahead means that the, the geomagnetic north is straight ahead. Yeah? So we've explained the meaning in terms of indication and function. Yeah? So then once you've explained meaning that way, we've got misrepresentation. Because now, when you hold a, magnet, a magnet over the bacteria, you lure them to your deaths and you say, ha-ha, <laughs> fooled you, you got it wrong. <laughs> okay, so that, that was a satisfying kind of note that we ended on last time. Right? Is that kind of plain where Gretschke is? Uh, how it's meant to work? OK. Um, there is a kind of basic problem for this approach. It comes up in a lot of ways. But I said, when we're talking about assigned functions, the functions that dials and meters have, these are functions that they have in virtue of our language or what we want them to do, what we think we'd like them to do, something like that. Um, and so if you have uh, something that's got a function, it can have that function because of our wants, because of what we say it's going to be used for. Um, and if that's what's going on, if that's where the function comes from, then that's not going to help us in explaining what the basis of meaning is. But Dritsky's idea was, um, let's not explain function in terms of wants and what we say the thing is for. Let's explain function by anchoring it down to the needs of the organism. Um, the system has a function if it's serving some need of the organism. That's a really basic move in Dritsky. This is the same move that people were making um, about the, pumping of the, the, the function of the heart being to pump blood. Right? It has that function because that's the need of the human being that it serves to pump blood. So a connection between function and need there. Um, the basic problem for Dritsky is that this doesn't quite work, this approach. If you just say what need the system has, that doesn't uniquely pin down what function the system has. And if you don't have an account of function, then you don't yet have an account of what it takes for there to be malfunction, so you don't have an account of right and wrong. Yeah, it's really basic that we'd be able to connect need to function and have that uniquely pinned down, right and wrong. 
Um, just to illustrate, <clears throat> suppose those bacteria, those marine bacteria that we last saw in Denmark or Norway, whatever it is, um, suppose those marine bacteria are captured and we take them to the South Pacific and their magnetosomes lead them north, which in the South Pacific takes them to the water that is full of oxygen. You following me? Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing you expect to happen, right? In the Northern Hemisphere, um, following geomagnetic north, takes you to oxygen-free water. In the Southern Hemisphere, um, let's suppose, following geomagnetic north, takes you to water that's full of oxygen and kills the bacteria. If that happens, the, bacteri the bacteria have been taken north uh, uh, by the magnetosome. Has that been a malfunction of the magnetosome? We don't need the magnetosome serving. Oh, but has the magnetosome malfunctioned there? Did the bacteria get it wrong in that case? Can you put up your hand if you, your hunch is the bacteria got it wrong? Is the bacteria got it right? Oh, one, one person? What about if the bacteria got it right in that situation? Okay, it's one vote for, one against, two against, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me restate the problem. Um, we know what the bacteria need, right? They need water that doesn't have a lot of oxygen in it. That's okay. And this magnetosome has got something to do with taking them away from such water, water with a lot of oxygen in it. They want water without oxygen. That's all right. Okay. So the magnetosome works because it lines up with the geomagnetic fields of the Earth and takes the bacterium to geomagnetic north. But then if we take the bacterium to, the, to, to a different area and following the magnetosome takes it to geomagnetic north, all right, but into oxygen-free, oxygen-rich water, then um, has the magnetosome malfunctioned or not? Can you put your hand up if you think the answer is yes, it's malfunctioned? One, if it's no, it has not malfunctioned, it's done just fine. What do you think is not malfunctioned? If, if you understand the question perfectly well, but you have no idea what the answer is, can you put your hand up? Okay, thank you. Okay, that's good. Okay, I should have asked that the first time. Right. Um, okay, I think it's genuinely hard to know. Right? I mean, it's not that I know the right answer to this. I, I think um, it's very hard to say. There are two takes you could have, and they seem to me equally defensible. You could say um, the magnetosome got it wrong. The magnetosome is kind of like the speedometer in a car, and what it's saying is, hey, the oxygen-free free water, the magnetosome is saying, hey, the oxygen-free water is over there, straight ahead. If that's what the magnetosome is saying, then it got it wrong and it malfunctioned. On the other hand, you might say, no, that, that's not what the magnetosome is saying. And that's presumably what most of you think. The magnetosome is saying, this way is geomagnetic north. And um, the bacterium is saying, ah, so that way is geomagnetic north, is it? Well, since geomagnetic north is where the oxygen-free water is, I'll go over there to my death. Um, so all that went wrong in that reading is the magnetosome worked fine, but the bacterium just uh, uh, went wrong because the functioning of the bacterium usually depends on this contingency that the oxygen-free water is to the north. Um, so there are things that are these two different readings you could have as to what the function of the magnetosome is. You could say the function of the magnetosome is to indicate the direction of oxygen-free water, or you could say the function of the magnetosome is to indicate geomagnetic north. And just saying function is tied to need doesn't let you answer that question. Because although you know the need is to get oxygen-free water, and you know that the magnetosome is helping um, discharge that need, there are two different ways you could say it's doing that. You could say the organism's doing it either by indicating where the oxygen-free water is directly, or you could say, no, no, the magnetosome dis fulfills that need by telling the organism where geomagnetic north is. Um, and uh, since the geomagnetic north is correlated with oxygen-free water, um, that's, what the, th that's how the need is being served by the system. And you can't really, it seems to me there's no way of differentiating the two. I mean, either way, the system, the magnetosome, is serving that need, but it could be serving that need by having either of two quite different functions. So tying function to need does not let you uniquely specify what function the thing has. Yep. Uh, in the first case, yep. Really yeah. I mean, right. 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 With, uh, it that's right. Yeah. So yeah. How could you ever get things wrong? Yeah. yeah. Well. Remember the evil scientist with the bar magnet, right? You know, you <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, some people kick the dog, you know, I, I, I um, maltreat bacteria. Um, but, but, yeah. uh, so you'll lean over and you do that. Then it's getting it wrong about where geomagnetic north is. Is function, so you might, you might even say, its function is not to indicate geomagnetic north. Its function is not to indicate where the oxygen-free water is. Its function is to indicate local magnetic north. And the way it works is that local magnetic north usually lines up with geomagnetic north, which usually lines up with where the oxygen-free water is, which is why that helps the animal. But, but there, now there are three different candidates for the function of the system. Yeah? And if you've got that last function to indicate local magnetic north, then it's hard to see how the system could be making a mistake. Th that's the point. Yeah, I guess where, where, the, um, where the line that we're drawing is to, um, yeah. so that you can understand that uh, geomagnetic north is to indicate the force. Also, the way you explain where the, 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 uh, in case, uh, local magnetic north is usually, then you can understand it both A or B. Yeah. Yeah. Where, it's where we draw the line, so what local magnetic north is to indicate the heat. That's right. Yeah, and, and, and we're losing the idea that there's such a thing as getting it wrong here. That was where you began. Right? Because whatever it does, you say, well, what's the point to do that? Yeah. And then we don't know what it means that it's getting things wrong. So we're even losing where right and wrong come from. So there are two problems. Right? One is, it's indeterminate what the function is, just given a specification of the need. And the second problem is, we now don't know what right or wrong are anyway. Yeah. Um, so that was your point, right? Um, you could say the function of the magnetic is to indicate local magnetic north. And um, then you could say, even in the case in which I think, this is like the bacterium's revenge, right? You say, you didn't fool me. I was only thinking that local magnetic north was over there. And I was right, right? You see what I mean? Yeah, so this is the bacterium's revenge. Um, and the problem is not any mistake the bacterium made. The problem is just that um, in its actions, it usually relies on that correlation between local magnetic north and oxygenated water. And that correlation just broke down. But that wasn't a mistake it made. It was still getting it right. Yeah, so it <laughs> sucks to the human intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, that, that would be the idea. The machinery was working just fine. Um, it's like in your car, if you use your speedometer to figure what, if you're in a manual car, and you use your speedometer to figure what gear you should be in. 
Yeah, the speedometer might be telling you just the right things. You're getting the speed completely right. But you can just use it wrong. You went to the wrong gear. It would be like that. Is, is, is that a good analogy for what you had in mind? The machinery's fine. Is, is that what you meant? The, the magnetic storm is the machinery. Is that, you're like trying to drive a car water. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's you're right. So it's not, it's not even a mistake in the driving exactly. It's just the wrong context to be trying to use a car. Yeah, so if you move it into the South Pacific, that would be like that situation. I wouldn't want to be trying to drive that kind of machine down here. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, That's interesting. That's a, what would you say in that kind of case? Would you say that the um, the dials in the car are getting it right, or the dials in the car are getting it wrong? Or do you just want to say all the bets are off if it's in the wrong context? Okay, it's not the right context. Yeah, so that's a further possibility. I, I agree that that possibility is not on the map here. But the notion, the, your idea is, you can only talk about the function of the thing relative to a particular context, and if you move it out of that context, there is no saying what's right and wrong anymore, what the function of the thing is anymore. Yeah, that would be a different move. Yeah, that, that, that too is possible. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Uh, right. Within a certain range of measurement, right? Right. Yeah, for mid, mid, mid range speeds yeah, and so on, yeah. yeah. Relativity at quantum really long distance high speeds. It's not that we say the Newtonian equations get it wrong on the relative distance. Right. It's just that these don't even apply to this. Right. It's yeah. a completely crazy situation to try to use them. Right. Yeah, that's good too. I mean, I guess. So, what's the. Uh, how, how, I'm just trying to think, this is fair enough, so how do we spell out the implications of that for Dreschke's framework? The point is, the connect between needs and function. So I guess we can say, whatever context it's in, it doesn't matter what context it's in, the bacterium needs oxygen-free water. Right, that's all right, that's context independent. Right? But um, what we can say is that the magnetosome, well, what would you say the magnetosome has the function of getting uh, oxygen-free water, but only in a particular context? That, I guess that would be a way of defending the idea that um, the magnetosome is, is not making a mistake. Its function was only to indicate, um, its function was to indicate oxygen-free water in the context of um, a, a Norwegian fjord. It's something like that. Um, and take it out of that context, and there's no saying what the function of the magnetosome is anymore. Yeah. Something like that is the idea. Yeah. So it could still be getting it. Um, yeah, it, it could have that function of indicating geomagnetic north, even though it's not making a mistake in the local in the bad magnet case. Oh, sorry, I, have, I, put that, I put that wrong. It could have the function of indicating oxygen free water, even though it's not making a mistake in the South Pacific. It's just that in the South Pacific, all bets are off because it's in the wrong context. That'll be another diagnosis of what's happening here. Yeah. And I, th I think so far we don't have any way of knowing how to use these distinctions. I mean, these are all good distinctions. You know, if, if we're going to have a proper account of um, how human brain systems represent, we need those distinctions. Um, but we don't know how to bring them to bear in this case. Maybe we can't. Yeah, but we will need them eventually yeah, in a proper account of meaning. So the, the general problem is that whenever you get something, whenever you get some external factor that causes the system to go into some state, um, you can say the function of the system is to represent that factor. And what's going on is that it needs genus, and there's a correlation between actionist and genus. So if you think about human vision, you could say, well, the function of um, some cell firings is to indicate uh, uh, the presence of square objects out there. Um, but you could equally say, no, no, the function of those cell firings is to indicate a certain type of retinal projection. All, all your brain's ever telling you about is the condition of your retina. Um, and you say, well, there are these correlations between particular kinds of configuration in your retina and the squareness out there, and you just exploit those. Yeah, we need to know what the visual system is representing. I mean, we think when you see, you're seeing the people around you. Um, but if someone says, no, no, the function of vision is not to represent the people around you, the function of vision is just to tell you what's going on with your own retina. We need a way of thinking why that's not the right answer. So the danger is we don't know, what, we, we don't know what's being represented. And if you push it to the limit, as um, my question from the front said, um, then you've lost the possibility of misrepresentation altogether. Anytime something causes you to go into a particular state, you say, yeah, the function of the system is to be caused by that thing. Because that's a problem. I'll get you. <coughs> okay, plain enough what the problem is. That doesn't go away, incidentally. That, that just, um, I will tell you the solution in a moment, but there are, there's a whole f flourishing literature on this problem about indeterminacy of function. Um, because the thing is, Dreschke's thing doesn't just come out of the blue. This is a very intuitive idea. And if you're at all scientifically minded in your approach to language and meaning, then most people think something like Dreschke's approach must be right. You know, what else could it be? How else could it be happening that we're getting right and wrong in language and meaning in the biological world? Um, but then this is a really basic problem about indeterminacy of function. Um, the puzzle is, which one is the magnetosome representing? Is it where the oxygen-free water is? Is it where geomagnetic north is? Is it where local magnetic north is? We don't know which. Um, Gretzky's idea is this problem is actually insoluble for a creature as simple as a magnetosome. It actually becomes sol solvable only when you consider creatures that are a little bit more complicated. I said one big difference between the bacterium and us is that we seem to have a kind of flexibility and a capacity to learn that the bacterium lacks. And Gretzky's idea is that really is important here. So as a first softening up, suppose you're considering something just a little bit more complicated than the bacterium. Suppose you're considering something that has two different ways of finding the oxygen-free water. Then um, what happens is that it's got a magnetosome, right, and that fires uh, that central structure S. We're wondering what S represents. And um, it's got a light detector, and the light detector fires structure S. So um, the magnetosome is one thing it uses.